Matter flows through every fair Life totals dropping, feel the air Tapping lens, drawing destiny Victory's close, just to wait and see Magic dreams in my hand tonight Summon legends, see them ignite Battlefields, roaring cars in flight In this realm of magic, I take flight Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Deck Tech series we're going to be doing uh, on this channel. So. Uh, today we're going to be starting with one of the Magic World 30 Championship decks. Now, how this is going to work is we're going to break down the decks. We're going to see how they work as far as what their strategy is, what they're playing. Um, and then we're going to move into, if you play the deck, what you should be looking for as far as certain matchups. Um, like if you go up against Mono Red or if you go up against Golgari or whatever the current decks are when we do these deck decks for whatever decks are out, right? Um, so we're going to be looking at the standard metagame right now after Magic World 30. And then also we're going to be breaking down on if you play against the deck, what you should be looking for as far as how you beat the deck. Um, and then lastly, we're going to do a breakdown of how much the deck's probably going to run you if you want to create it, if you want to create it, if you want to buy it and play it at your paper F and M. Um, but mo you know, mainly some of these decks are going to be easily craftable on arena. Uh, so I'm really not going to put the arena component into it other than um, it's probably going to take you a lot of wild cards. <laughs> so with that, let's jump into our first deck of this series, uh, which is going to be Javier Dominguez's Demir Demons deck. Now this deck took down the whole thing. Uh, he ended up uh, becoming the world champion, second time. Um, so let's look at this deck, all right? So it's got, um, it is a blue-black deck if you're not aware of what Demir is, okay? And there's a two card combo in it and that's mainly what it's striving for um and it's really just a deck that kind of you know controls the game and gets to that mid game of playing out this combo and winning the game and so the first piece of the combo is jace the perfected mind okay so it's a it's a planeswalker that costs four or you can pay two life a blue and two mana to bring it down for three so it costs you two life and three mana and realistically what this what this card is doing when you play it is its last ability, which is minus X. Target player mills three times X. So you're gonna usually use it right after you've used your Doomsday Excruciator, which is a six drop, six black pip, right? Six, you have to have six black mana to cast this thing. It's a demon with flying. When Doomsday Excruciator enters, if it was cast, each player exiles all but the bottom six cards of their library face down at the beginning of your upkeep draw a card that last part kind of doesn't matter because if you play this 99.9% .9 of the time you've got a jace in your hand ready to go the follow-up turn play the jace mill the rest of their deck out they go to draw they lose the game that is pretty much the main win strategy of this deck now it does have the option to beat you down with a giant demon like archfiend of the dross which is a flying 6-6 six -six for four mana and when it comes in, it gets four oil counters on it. At the beginning of, of your upkeep, remove an oil counter. If it has no oil counters on it, you lose the game. Whenever a creature an opponent control dies, its controller loses two life. So the other you know, win condition is either beating you down with these two six sixes, the Doomsday Demon or the Archfiend, depending on how low your life total is. If you know a couple fairy masterminds or a couple Broncos got in for some hits, or you've taken some damage from using your own spells or casting things or whatever, those are the two paths to victory. It's either going to beat you down fast with some big demons, or it's going to mill you out with the Jace. Now, let's look at the draw engine of this deck, right? Unholy Annex Ritual Chamber. Unholy Annex is a two mana black, so three mana total. Basically, it's a it's a Phyrexian arena, but at the end step, and you take two damage. But it says at the end, if you control um, a demon, you lose, you gain two life, and your opponent loses two life. So that's the thing. That's why there's demons in the deck. Now with the Ritual Chamber, boom, create a six six demon. See, it's got three different six six demons in this deck. So like I said, beat down strategy or mill strategy. So Unholy Annex, it's the card draw engine along with Mastermind. Mastermind, Flash, Flying, 2-1 Flyer for one and a blue. Whenever an opponent draws their second card each turn, you draw a card. You can pay three and a blue multiple times as long as you have the mana. 
each player draws a card. So if you are going up against another demon deck and they've got an unholy annex out and you flash this thing out, you're going to get to draw a card as well as they do. Um, so it's it's really good against the mirror match. It's really good against decks that want to draw cards, um, like Golgari. And so it's just it's an overall great card, especially with the flash and the flying makes it really evasive. Um, and then Bronco, the Caustic Bronco is one in a, one in a black for a two two, uh, you know horse mount snake horse mount whenever caustic bronco attacks reveal the top card of your library and put it into your hand you lose life equal to that card's mana value if constant caustic bronco isn't saddled otherwise each opponent loses that much life so having this down and then dropping an arch fiend and saddling that boy up and you can get it if you can get it in for two and then you rip a doomsday off of that caustic bronco they're taking another six so as you can see this deck can deal a lot of damage quickly um, but it's also, it's a mid-range deck. It, it wants to, it, 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 realistically, it's a combo deck, but it, it can play mid-rangey. And so that's when we get into the utility of the deck, right? You've got Duress, you've got Shoot the Sheriff, you've got Spell Stutter, you've got Go for the Throat, you've got Anoint with Affliction, you've got Cut Down. These spells allow you to interact with your opponent, kill off their creatures that are blocking your way or being a nuisance, or they're just straight up stopping you, or countering their spells or removing a really good uh, non-creature spell from their hand. Um, Duress, not only does it get you a non-creature spell out of their hand, it allows you to see that information of what they may be playing with. What are they going to do to you? What are they coming back with when you cast Archfiend of the Dross? Is it going to just instantly die? Should you put it out now? You know, things like that to think about when you cast a Duress. Uh, uh, the other nice thing with Spell Stutter is... Fairy Mastermind is a fairy. So if you've got four of those on the board somehow, and you haven't won yet, um, I don't know what you're doing with your life. No, I'm kidding. Uh, if you got four of those out, Spell Stutter counters a spell unless they pay six. So for every fairy out there, Fairy Mastermind, you get to pump that spell up into a mana leak, into a, a convolute, into all kinds of different things, into you know a, a synchronate, even though it doesn't remove it but the point is is you can keep ticking up the value of that spell for each mastermind out there so it has some great synergy um looking at the mana base okay you notice that there are no islands in this deck and there are only two lands that can't produce black and that's on purpose because you got to have that six mana black for your doomsday um realistically a good opening hand um, is going to have you some uh, interrupt spells that are going to like interrupt your, your opponent's creatures, get some stuff out of their hands. Maybe have like a Bronco or a Fairy Mastermind in there with a with an Archfiend of the Dross and about three or four lands. Maybe an Unholy Annex in there. Like you're you're really looking for the low cost stuff, the Doomsday and the Jace. You're going to play into that. You're going to draw into that as the game goes on. You really don't want those in your opening hand especially if you're playing against a deck that's playing duress as well and they duress your jace away it makes it that much harder to really pull the combo off um so if you're playing this deck okay and you're going up against i would say almost any deck in the format a really good opening hand would probably be like an annex with a duress with a shoot the sheriff or go for the throat three land and a bronco or a mastermind that's really your ideal situation to start with and then eventually hopefully you, tr you rip into an Archfiend of the Dross or you get up to the point where you can cast that Doomsday with a Jace in your hand and realistically this deck is going to win by turn six or seven if it draws out perfectly. Um, now if you're going up against this deck right and you see your opponent starting off with Unholy Annex and all this other stuff you're going to have to think okay am I a fast aggressive deck or am I a mid rangey deck? If you're a fast aggressive deck and they're playing an unholy annex you need to kill them as fast as humanly possible because they're helping you with that two damage from the unholy annex and you need to save either your bounce or your removal spells for their demons um, whether it be the ritual demon or the archfiend of the dross demon because those things will shut you down because the majority of decks that are going to come out fast are going to be overpowered very quickly by a 6-6 six, six. So you're going to want to save those pump spells and removal spells to either trade or kill off those bigger creatures. Um, now, if you look at this, you're staring down a total of 10 removal spells. 
in this deck. That's a sixth of the deck. So more than likely, your first couple creatures are going to die. Um, and they are hard uh, hard removal. Whereas cut down is a little conditional to where, let's say you got a hard fire hero out, and if they try to cut down your hero, you can pump it with like a monstrous rage and get it out of range of cut down. Now this deck's only playing one of them, uh, and so that's you know that's a very very uh, corner case in that type of deck. So more than likely it's going to get shot, go for the throated or anointed. Uh, most of the time heart fear heart here heart fire heroes god that's hard are going to get anointed to eliminate that amount of damage coming to them uh, because it's not dying it's getting exiled and so um the other thing i want to i want to look at here is the fountain port that's another draw engine you really like if you're not playing demolition field uh, because your mana base is just you know really strict I, I, if you can play Demolition Field, I think it's a very good card in this format, not just for Fount Fountain Port, but also for Restless Reefs um, and your Restless Cottages and a lot of other man lands. So this deck, if you were to try to buy it, uh, you had no cards, you buy it outright to play it, it's going to run you in between $260 to $270 to buy this deck. Uh, your more expensive cards you're looking at, uh, Fairy Mastermind is thirteen dollars and sixty-seven cents. You need four copies of it. Uh, sewers of under the under city sewers. Thankfully, it's only running one, uh, but that's a twenty-six dollar card on its own. Um, and then your other um, card that's going to really run you up there is Unholy Annex Ritual Chamber. That card is spiked from a thirty cent card all the way up to a ten dollar and thirty-three cent card. Uh, so it'll run you about $41, $42 to buy a copy, buy a play set of those, and you need four of them in the deck. If you're going to trim or cut or maneuver cards around, I would say probably look at like maybe cutting a duress or maybe switching around your go for the throat, anoint, things like that, shoot the sheriffs. Um, but I would not take away from those first five cards of Jace, Doomsday, Archfiend, Fairy, and Caustic. They're very important to the deck. Very, and same with Unholy Annex. Those six cards cannot be removed from this deck. They're, they're the key cards of this deck. So, uh, and those are going to be the ones that cost you the most money, sadly. But that's why they're the most money, is because they're the best cards. Um, so with that, um, you know... It, it's a very good deck. It's beatable. Don't get me wrong. I watched a lot of matches where it got beat. Majority of the time, it's either a hyper-aggressive deck that had a really good draw, or the deck itself shot itself in the foot by not drawing land drops and missing its land drops, which I find very hard to do in this style of deck because there are so many card draws in this deck. It, it just... And it's playing a total of... Let's see here... Real quick math, 12, 20, it's playing 26 lands. So it, I don't see it missing too bad on, on land drops. I mean, yeah, you do get games where you get mana flooded or mana, you know, mana screwed, but it is what it is. That's the variance of magic. So anyways, I hope you guys like this breakdown of the deck. Uh, if you guys have any more questions or um, maybe you uh, want me to t uh, touch on the decks in a certain way, you have an idea of of what I might be missing on, you know, explaining something about this, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to answer your questions or uh, get some positive feedback of, you know, hey, I really like how you did this, but could you touch on this a little bit more? And, you know, anything helps, you know. Um, I'm here to help you guys try to get a better value of maybe understanding these decks, taking them to your local FNM, or playing them on Arena. So with that, I'm going to let you guys go because I don't want to take up any more of your time. But as I'm going to leave you like I always leave you. Thank you for stopping by, watching the channel. Please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. There's more of this content coming out. There's all kinds of different content coming out. But with that, I'm going to leave you like I always do. Leave you like I always leave you. Wow, words are hard today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And stay syrupy, my friends. Magic dreams in my hands tonight. Summon legends, see them ignite. Battlefields, roaring cars in flight. In this realm of magic, I take flight.